Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz at the National Association of Counties Convention. It's my pleasure to introduce you to, if you don't know him already, Richard Forster. He is a supervisor in Amador County. He's also the president of the California State Association of Counties. So many levels of questions, but let's start with beautiful Amador Hi, County. Good to see you, sir. Tell us about Amador County. Amador County is a beautiful place to be. It's uh, about 400 square miles. A uh, good portion of that, about 60% uh, is uh, National Forest ground, Amador nice. Eldorado National Forest. Nice. So uh, yeah. we deal with the federal side as well as the state and the local side. We have uh, a couple unique things. We have five incorporated cities. Okay. The uh, What's the biggest? Uh, biggest is, uh, I think it's Ione now, okay. which is in my district. Nice. The smallest is also in my district, Amador City, okay. which is about uh, close to 200 people. Okay, so you got both sides. That's right. How many people live in the county overall? Uh, with or without the prison. So uh, we have a Mule, a Mule Creek State Prison. No, that's a fair question. I was speaking with a colleague of yours from Del Norte who has Pelican Bay. That's right. And it's a relevant part of the question. That's right. So, so give us both answers. We have Mule Creek State Prison, which uh, houses about 3,000, and then we have an infill project that was just built, okay. about another 1,800. With that, the county is about uh, 36,000 people. Okay, so it's a nice size, not too big, not too small. Uh, we are close to Sacramento, though, so sometimes it feels very big. Uh, tourism is one of our I main see. industries. So I must ask you, I am sure you're very busy in Amador with the work on the Board of Supervisors. Right. Why, oh why, did you decide to become the president of the California State Association of Counties? Well, I, previously I was the, the president of the, at that time it was the Regional Council of Rural Counties. Sure. So I, I've just already wow. migrated towards leadership positions and I feel that I can represent my county as well as the rest of the entities in the state. RCRC was, uh, now it's 34 or 35 counties, right. I believe. But uh, now I get a chance to represent all 58 counties but with that, I think uh, I can bring some good things back to my county and right. my region. And let's talk about that because, look, you have Alpine County on the one hand That's right. with, I don't know, is it a thousand hundred people? Uh, pretty close. And you yeah. have L.A. County on the other with 10 mm -hmm. million people. Mm -hmm. If L.A. County were a state, it'd be Michigan. That's right. And so are the issues similar between Alpine and Los Angeles? Yes and no. There's always similarities in the right. counties uh, when you go to, of course, things like uh, the criminal justice side. Uh, L.A., I think, has the, the biggest uh, facility right. to house inmates in the, in the country. Well, Alpine doesn't have a facility or has a very small facility, but there's still commonalities with the issues of uh, AB 108 and yeah, criminal justice in general. I want to talk to you about an issue that is facing our state, and it is truly frightening that's right and so many of us that live in our urban centers don't have a sense mm -hmm. of what's happening right now and that deals with the question and the reality of tree mortality mm -hmm. the lungs for the state of california are dying that's right explain sir this issue started uh, realistic with with the drought about five years ago so uh, before the the bark beetle is always around well, the bark beetle is a uh, pest that takes advantage of situations. So while trees were dying during that period five years ago, now with the drought, we're not getting those uh, hard freezes in the winter time. Which would kill off some of the bark beetle? The, the hard freezes are what caused the bark beetle to be suppressed. Oh, suppressed, I see. So without those hard freezes though, bark beetle has taken advantage of that and exponentially multiplied. Instead of two hatches a year now, they're having as many as four hatches a year. Millions of more bugs that fly from one tree to the, the next. And what they do is go in, they uh, bore holes through, go into the middle of the tree, uh, disrupt. Up. That's right. But what, what happens with the trees, because of the drought, they're not able to push as much of the sap out that suppresses the bark beetles. And that sap is, is actually toxic to the bark beetles. So, it, so the it's a, balance has uh, been impacted by this dramatic drought. Very much so. So the trees that are impacted are ponderosa pines, right. now the sugar pines, lodgepoles, other, other types of trees. But uh, the drought in general was impacting those before the bark beetle got involved. But here's what's so upsetting when we look at the situation. Mm -hmm. This was a decent year when you think about rain, at least in Northern California. That's right. Yet I understand we're not seeing much relief 
in terms of tree mortality, despite That's the fact we had an average to above average year of rain in NorCal. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of rain, a lot of our reservoirs filled up. Unfortunately, not those hard freezes. Uh, it wasn't so, cold enough. That's right. In 2014, we had um, three point, the estimate was by U.S. Forest Service, 3.3 million dead trees. 2015, 29 million dead trees. 2016, their latest uh, flyover about uh, three weeks ago showed 66 million dead I read trees. That. Now it's going to be much higher than that. So let's talk about the ramifications mm -hmm. of those dead trees. If they are dead, I presume that they're drying up and the land around them is dry anyway. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, if there's a spark, if there's a lightning hit, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? Right. I sit on the, the uh, state tree mortality task force as well as our Amador County uh, tree mortality task force. But the, on the state force, a couple weeks ago, um, they indicated, Cal Fire indicated, that they have stopped three fires at the uh, border of going into those high mortality areas. You'll know because um, you'll, you'll see massive cries from those counties when you get the fire, wildfires sweeping through those areas that have been devastated because many counties like uh, Mariposa County, you have anywhere from 70 to 100% tree mortality. Uh, Kev, Supervisor Kevin Can, you may have interviewed mm -hmm. him, but from where? From Mariposa mm -hmm. County. One statement he made is, "It's just unbelievable to think about our uh, county with no ponderosa pines. They're all gone." The question, though, is: I remember we're probably around the same age, the Smokey the Bear campaign, mm -hmm. and pursuant to that message, we did everything we could to damper forest fires. That's we right. wanted to make sure we didn't have forest fires, and the minute the fire started, we put it out. Right. What we've learned is that fires aren't necessarily bad. That's right. And there is a regenerative quality to forest fires. Mm -hmm. And so while, if we're getting near population centers, of course we need to look at the question of putting out the fires. But should we not maybe let these fires burn? Is there not an advantage to seeing the burns? Well, you already named the problem. Uh, we used to have prescriptive burns. Uh, very difficult now. I'll give you an example. In Amador County, as uh, close as about 50 years ago, when they came out of the forest with the cattle down Highway 88, right. at that time, hardly anyone lived there. So they brought the cattle down the road, and much like the Indians did way back, they drug a uh, fire, they drug a rope behind them with fire on it and lit fire to the ground. What that did is it burned off all the low-lying brush right. and left the, uh, the trees in place so that the, the fires couldn't crown like they do now. And as I understand it, as a result of the rains you did receive in Northern California, you got some growth. Mm -hmm. But then some of it's been dying off because the rains haven't right. continued, so you have more kindling. Yeah, I, while the U.S. Forest Service is a big partner in this, I mean, part of the issue is the uh, endangered species, the spotted owl, our uh, efforts to go into the forest and thin them because we haven't been thinning the forest. Because of that, that's part of the problem why the bark beetle can move so easily. The trees are so close together. And you say thinning forests and controversy erupts immediately. Well, I'm talking thinning, though. I'm not talking clear-cutting. I don't disagree. But that's right. People may not make that distinction. That's exactly right. Do you need to go in? Do we need to go in and start clearing some of those dead trees? We, we need to take all the dead trees down. Mm. What Cal Fire has said, especially close to infrastructure now, that's why we're working so closely with our partners. Uh, Caltrans, right. PG&E, the county roads, uh, that's where we're going to get grant money from the state. Uh, the problem with the grant money is 75-25. We got to come up with that 25% match, but it needs to be done to protect our infrastructure. And that's not only county roads, that's going to be like for water agencies. There are flumes, there are infrastructure right. in place. PG&E is doing that right now, taking trees down. If you don't take them down, the bugs are going to continue to have a home to move to. To be continued? That's right. He is Richard Forrester. He is president of CSAC, a supervisor in Amador County. Brad Pomerantz here, Charter Local Edition.